In this week's episode of Monkey Shorts, I wanna show you one of my favorite Power Query patterns, which is numbering group rows. And this is really, really useful for a variety of reasons, from ranking to just getting index numbers for different things. But the trick with it, as we can see when we go and we take a look at the data over here, is that I can't use a numeric formula to just go and number things because I've got four rows of apples and I've got three rows of pears and three rows of oranges, so they're not consistent. So here's what's gonna happen for this one, is I'm gonna start by um, filling down on my fruits here, just to make sure that they all fill into the blank cells. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through the process of numbering, but I do wanna just call this out really quickly. If you are interested in making sure that things are sorted into the right areas, there's a couple things you might wanna be uh, considering here. So uh, I'm gonna go and sort my fruits right now in ascending order. So that's gonna go apples, oranges, pears, that's all fine. And then if I wanna break ties within this for ranking, for example, maybe I could sort in descending order. Now, oftentimes this is sufficient, but if it's not, if you find that after running your numbering pattern for your group rows, it doesn't work, you'll wanna come back here if it resorts and just change this to add a table dot buffer. As I say, it's not always required, but sometimes it is. And what this does, it actually streams all this into memory so that Power Query now knows that the sorting here was actually important, okay? So now that we got that done, let's do this. We're gonna to go to uh, transform and group by, and I'm gonna group by my fruits here, and I'm not even gonna bother grouping by anything else. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this all rows operation, and we'll make something called data. We're now gonna say okay, and what you can see is that here I've got my individual tables of the four, three, and three fruits that I actually have in place. You can see that they're all nicely sorted in order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and add myself a nice new custom column here. And this one here is going to be, uh, it's called table dot, let me get that mouse out of the way, add index column. And basically the way the recipe pattern works here is it says, what's your table? Well, we're gonna grab the data table that we actually have there. It wants to know a uh, new column name here. I'm just gonna call this one rank, actually, why not? And then the initial value, we're gonna start with one. And then we're gonna increment it by one as well, so it counts up by ones. I'm gonna close this one here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna just say okay, and you'll notice that I get another table. The difference is this table has three columns, this one has my new rank column. You can see one, two, three, four, this one goes one, two, three, one, two, three. So to finish off the recipe, basically, we remove everything except the custom column and then expand everything back out and then reset the data types when we're done. So I'm just gonna go transform, take data types, and boom, there we are. And we now have some nice row numbers that go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and one, two, three. We've even got ranking of our products here, which actually works out pretty nicely. Thank you for watching this episode of Monkey Shorts. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to click on the Skillwave logo on the bottom left in order to subscribe to our channel. Or if you'd like to see more videos in the series, click on the playlist tile on the right. And if you'd like to get more comprehensive training, you should definitely check out our website at skillwave.training.